Hello everyone, this is Shannon from That So Po, and today I'm doing week 23 of my 2021 reads. This week I read a bunch of great queer books, although I did have to NFN one, which is not for now. Uh, also at the end of this I want to tell you about a couple of different videos, one of which I was collaborating with a friend on, and the others were just ones that I watched and wanted to share with you. The first book that I finished this week was The Descent of Monsters by Neon Yang. This is the third book in the Tensorit series, and I really enjoyed this. Um, this is told almost like an epistolary where a bunch of it is in letters or diary entries or like official reports. And so it's all sort of this slightly more removed um, storytelling style, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. Basically, this is kind of a murder mystery where there is um, a research station where everybody is kind of gruesomely killed and an investigator has to go in and try to figure out what happened. Um, and so the whole story is trying to uncover that. And it brings in sort of some of the side characters from previous books in this series, although it doesn't have any of the main characters from the previous two books. I actually really liked that. It was exploring the world a little bit more, exploring the way that the Tensorit Empire works and addressing some really interesting questions. So I loved the kind of mystery aspects. I loved the questioning um, of the Empire aspects. All of that was really, really cool. It did get a little bit violent and sort of graphically so for my taste, but other than that, I thoroughly enjoyed this installment in the series and I gave it four and a half out of five stars. Then I finished The Ascent to Godhood by Neon Yang, which is the fourth and final book in the Tensorit series, and this was such a great conclusion to the series. I really loved this. This is definitely my favorite out of the whole four series. Um, so this is, again, a slightly different type of story. We are getting um, a story told to us by somebody who was the previous handmaiden of the head of the Tensorit, the Empress, basically, and she's telling us about her her life and also about how she came to know um, this protectorate empress and how uh, things kind of played out. Um, it is so well done. I loved the narrative voice of this handmaiden and again I loved this view into a different aspect of the Tensorate Empire. Um, it really questions a lot of issues of empire and I loved the perspective of the handmaiden who was somebody who came from you know poor background and uh, it's just it's really well told it's got a lot of humor in it and it's got a lot of criticisms of empire I just thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed this also if you liked the Empress of Salt and Fortune I think that you would very much like this one as well and I think also that really for this whole series you could sort of read a couple of them out of order and it wouldn't matter so if you wanted to start with this one that's also totally fine in my opinion oh and I gave this five out of five stars Next, I finished The Magic Fish by Trung Le Nguyen, which is a graphic novel that is maybe auto-fiction, so it's based a little bit, I think, inspired by um, Wen's own life, but it is very fantastical at the same time. So this is a graphic novel set in maybe the 90s following um, a middle school boy who is realizing that he needs to come out to his mom um, but doesn't know how to tell her, especially because his parents, um, who are Vietnamese refugees, are still kind of struggling to learn English and he's losing some of his Vietnamese and so he doesn't even know the word for saying that he's gay to his mom. Um, and they connect a lot through storytelling. So one of the ways that they practice English is that he reads different fairy tales out loud to his parents. And in the story, we get him reading fairy tales to his mom, also his mom telling fairy tales to him, and some relatives telling fairy tales to his mom and we get all of these different fairy tales that are 
uh, based on classical myths in each culture, but really integrated well with what's going on in the main character's life and this sort of coming out story. It is absolutely beautifully illustrated. I loved the way that it integrates fairy tales with his experience. Um, and I really love that idea of taking you know, the universality of stories and uh, making it your own. So it was really, really moving, so beautiful. I gave this five out of five stars and I highly recommend it. Next, I read Rafe, A Buff Male Nanny by Rebecca Weatherspoon. I'd heard really great things about this from a bunch of friends and I've read some of Rebecca Weatherspoon's other works and really enjoyed them. So. I was so glad to pick this up. It was a really great read. Um, I very much enjoy romance novels where you have two people who are uh, very respectful of each other and coming together as partners, which you very much have in this story. So basically we follow Sloane, who is a single mom to some twins who are just about to start school. She has just moved to LA. She is a heart surgeon um, and just really needs to have a nanny except that the one that she had hired kind of just left her all of a sudden and she needs to quickly replace her um, and she is recommended Rafe. Rafe is somebody who's had kind of you know some troubled teenagehood years and he fell into nannying and really loves it. He's great with kids uh, and he comes to nanny for Sloan falls in love with her two twin daughters, and also falls in love with Sloane. Um, the way that they navigate discussing uh, whether or not they're gonna move forward with getting involved in, with each other is just so well done, so adult. Um, the way that they handle their emotions, that they discuss things, that they move with caution, but also following what they desire. It's it's so well done. I really loved it. Also, another thing that I really liked about this story is that the conflict in the story comes more from Sloane's ex-husband rather than, you know, conflict between the two of them. It's not that they don't have anything they have to work out, but they work it out together as partners. And I really, really like that. Um, definitely in romance, a third act breakup is like a huge deal. But in this one, the third act conflict is much more centered externally rather than internal to the relationship and I, I absolutely adored that. Um, the only thing about this book is that on the kind of romance spectrum this edges a little bit closer to erotica in that there is lots and lots and lots and lots of sex and I'm not against sex scenes at all in romance but here I found myself kind of flipping pages going like okay all right but when are we getting back to the story? Um, so just a little bit heavy on the steamy scenes and I could have dealt with just a different proportion of the scenes devoted to more like the storyline and um, the kind of emotional development as well. So overall I gave this four and a half out of five stars. If you like contemporary romance definitely pick this one up. And lastly I did NFN or Not For Now, a book which was Each of Us a Desert by Mark Oshiro. So this is a book that I had been really really looking forward to. I've heard Mark Oshiro talk on a couple of different panels and they are absolutely wonderful to hear talk. I really like their approach to things. Um, and Angela at Literature Science Alliance did a great review of this. I will link her channel and that review below. So based on everything that she had said I was super excited and I got into this book and oh I was so in love with it I was just devouring it it's so beautifully written it's almost poetic in a lot of ways so atmospheric um, and then I got to some really violent parts so I ended up getting through 47% of this before I decided that I just I had to put it down because I was kind of dreading those violent parts and I checked in with Angela and she said that, yeah, actually there are some more violent parts in the later part of the book too. And it was just a little bit too graphic for me. So this story though is so well written that I don't want to DNF it. I want to just NF in it and say sometime in the future when I have built up my tolerance for uh, graphic violence, which I mean, just more the ability to manage it. Um, I'd like to come back to this book because I thought it was really, 
really well done. Basically, this is um, sort of a dystopian future in a desert type world, um, but it is very, very heavily influenced by uh, Spanish. There's a ton of Spanish in this, which I absolutely loved. And we have a bunch of people who are struggling to get by, uh, living in this very difficult world. There's not enough water, these sorts of things. And they have a sun god, uh, who sort of punishes them if they don't do things correctly, including if they have sinned in some way, if they've done something wrong, they have to purge themselves of those sins by confessing to a cuentista, like a storyteller. Um, and then the cuentista takes those and then she herself gives them back to uh, to the sun god and she has no memories of them. And so we follow one of these cuentistas and she is dealing with uh, really that struggle of, of what she needs out of life versus what her responsibilities to her community are. And I loved the way that this explored so much of um, a lot of issues of what it means to take on the emotional burdens of others, which is a story that I've seen in especially a lot of Latinx um, kind of sci-fi stories about women, this, this idea of being the one who holds the emotional burden. Loved that discussion, loved the writing. There's actual poetry in this that I thought was beautiful. And again, that desert atmosphere um, is so beautiful. And it's really, it's a coming of age story. So there's so much about this that I loved, but it was quite graphic um, in some of the violence. And I just, I couldn't manage to continue right now, but at some point in the future, hopefully I will be able to. Okay, so those are all of the books for this week, but I did wanna mention a couple of videos. So the first thing is another collaboration video that I did. Um, my friend Freddy at Sluggish Reader put up our discussion that we did about Ripples by Shili Kao. Uh, so I will link that below. I loved our discussion. We had such a fun time. Um, I don't think we go into any spoilers or anything like that, but Ripples is a great short story collection by a Malaysian author um, printed by a small Malaysian press that it's just not getting the kind of hype it deserves, but it really does deserve it. It's one of my favorite books from last month. Uh, it is just so well written. So we discussed like all of the themes and the things that we loved about it. The other videos that I want to mention are three kind of SFF videos that I had heard about from Becca at Read Becca. I'm going to link her channel below and please check her out. If you guys like SFF or, um, or if you just like the kind of reading that I do, I mean, you really should check her out. I have been friends with her on Reddit and Goodreads for years, and she started a YouTube channel, a booktube channel, only somewhat recently, but man, I love her content. She reads so so widely, all kinds of genres and age groups and everything like that, but she reads a ton of SFF and I always love what she reads and I love her perspective and the way that she talks about books. So definitely check her channel out. And also she's been linking some really cool videos. So over the past week, Sish and I, watched, my husband and I watched a couple of videos that she talked about. One was the Nebula Awards, um, which was so good. I wasn't planning on watching it, but Becca said, no, actually this award ceremony was really great to watch. And she was right, I was so moved the way that the nebulas really honored the um the authors who won it was so beautiful and i loved seeing like p jelly clark and martha wells and sarah pinsker give their acceptance speeches everybody was so moved i just i loved it um the other two videos that uh we watched that becca had recommended were some author discussion videos so there's one with Martha Wells in discussion with Kate Elliott. It was so sweet. And the other was P. Jelly Clark in discussion with Anne Leckie. And so those were great. So I think Becca is just a great source if you want to hear about SFF books, but also apparently really cool stuff going on in the SFF world. So definitely recommend those videos if you're interested in SFF. In any case, if you guys have read any of the books that I talked about this week, or if you have any thoughts, any recommendations, anything at all, just leave me a comment down below.